Hi everyone and welcome back to Jack's English. Today we're going to go back to Sherlock and we're going to learn some difficult grammar. So prepare yourself, get yourself a pen and paper and we will start today's class. So as I mentioned, we are going to learn some grammar today and we're going to learn an expression as well. So let's, as usual, start by watching the clip from Sherlock and listen closely. Wouldn't be a game if you knew. You're the one who chooses. Why should I? I've got nothing to go on. What's in it for me? I haven't told you the best bit yet. Let's start simply today. At the start of the clip, Sherlock says, Why should I? I've got nothing to go on. Why should I? I've got nothing to go on. So let's focus on that second part. I've got nothing to go on. Nothing to go on. So what does this mean? It's, it's not a common expression, but it's good for certain situations. And it means I have no information or no clue in order to do something or to make a decision. So in this case, Sherlock is playing a game or he's been offered a game and he must make a decision. But why should he make a decision? He has nothing to go on. He has no information or clue in order to make that decision. So how can we use this in our daily life? Well, normally we use it when we have to make a decision with no information. So perhaps you need to buy a present for someone that you don't know, perhaps a coworker, you don't know anything about them. So you think, how can I buy them a present? I've got nothing to go on. I don't know any information. I've got no clue about them. So that's, that's a situation where you can use today's phrase. And it's a situation where you have no information, no clue in order to do something or make a decision. The main thing I want to do with you today is looking at where the taxi driver, the other guy, says, I haven't told you the best bit. I haven't told you the best bit yet. I haven't told you the best bit. Now, as I said, this is a grammar structure and it's the present perfect, but we don't need to worry too much about what it is. But let's look at this structure and what it means. Now, it's a negative. It's a negative sentence. So I haven't verbed. I haven't verbed. So what does this mean? I haven't verbed means I didn't do something but I will or I intend to. Okay, so in this case he said, I haven't told you the best bit. We know from that grammar that he didn't tell us, obviously, but he intends to, he will. So how can we use this in our daily life? The answer is we can use it a lot. I'm gonna give you some examples that I, I think we can all use day to day and I want you to think about what is the thing we didn't do and then what will we intend to do or what will we do? So I'll give you three or four examples now. Firstly, I haven't finished my homework. This is an example I don't want to hear as a teacher, but it's possible. Number two would be, I haven't started the project. Number three, I haven't eaten dinner. And then finally, number four, I haven't left the house yet. Okay, so those are four common examples, day-to-day -day examples. Try to think about this grammar and how it's giving that extra meaning, that extra information of I intend to or I will. So that's the end of our video today. I think a little bit of a shorter one, but I really want you to focus on the use of present perfect that we learned today. I haven't done something. I think that's the biggest takeaway from this clip. So please practice and as usual if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and I will happily answer as soon as I can. Have a great day and see you soon.